Your pain is the breaking of the shell that encloses your understanding. It is the bitter potion by which the physician within you heals your sick self. Therefore, trust the physician. So it's been 15 years since my initial watch of the boondocks. I'll never forget that summer in 2007 when my dude put me on. Aaron Magruder's classic adult cartoon came off as a funny ignorant show for Negroes on the surface. But when you peel back the layers and get to the ground root of what was really being relayed, this is by far one of the most legendary tools of social commentary of all time. The legend that is the misadventures of Riley and Huey Freeman and their grandfather reigned supreme within the black community. Now before we actually saw the debut of the TV show on Adult Swim in 05, McGruder actually had a backlog of a decade worth of comic strip content that dates all the way back to 1996. The strip was published on Hitlist.com and actually made its way to the Source magazine in 1997. Even back then, just being a comic, the Boondocks was already controversial for making a mockery of the black community and the politics of America. At least, that's how it was perceived. So don't think it was an instant hit off the rip, because several publications turned it down at first for being too much on the edgy side. Eventually, the strip found its footing, but who honestly cares? Most of you are here about the TV show, right? Aaron had every intention of getting an animated series for the Boondocks pretty much its entire lifespan. And it's just that getting it published as a comic came first in 1999. It would be six years before it would finally get its airing. There were attempts to get a pilot done for the Fox Network, but it was hard to water it down at that time to make it suitable for television. Keith. I... I told them you didn't start the fight, but they wouldn't... It's okay. No good deed goes unpunished. Thank you. Oh, hell no! You got a sandwich from that hoe? But in 2005, things finally came to fruition when Mike Lazo, president of Adult Swim, gave the green light on a 15-episode first season. The show was only loosely based on the prior nine years of content from the comic strip, but still honed the essence of what the Boondocks was all about. Everything about this show was by black consciousness and for black consciousness, starting with its opening theme song, Judo Flip by Asheru, a conscious hip hop artist as well as a youth activist. And of course, all the episode themes which we'll touch on later in the video. So majority of you watching this don't need an introduction to the show at all. You got two children and their grandfather who move out of the projects of Shy town to White Town. This is for no other purpose but to really hone in on the dynamic between white and black people in America. So let's take an activist kid, his ignorant wannabe street little brother. We now return to Gang's Delicious Resurrection. Resurrection? Then the gang dead. He was shot a bunch of times, I. Right? At least he trying. And slightly less ignorant, but still hella ignorant grandfather. And drop them into the politically correct and conservative and racist Woodcrest. See, the possibilities for interesting stories are endless. Each character plays their role in depicting different character types we are all used to seeing in our community as black people. And I would say this is where majority of the appeal lies in the show. In its characters, we all have friends or family members who represent every single main and recurring character in this show. Everybody has a father, grandfather, uncle, or something like that, or at least know somebody with one of these people who are just like granddad. We all grew up with a wannabe thug brother or friend like Riley. A lot of us feel like Huey, and if you don't feel like Huey, you probably know someone like Huey and view that person the same way everyone in the show does Huey, like an uptight conspiracy theorist nut job. You see how all this comes together? Everyone knows an Uncle Tom, and no, it's not a coincidence that his name is Tom. The only one character you don't see every day is probably Uncle Ruckus. It's the subtle moments in the show that make it all worthwhile. Cause though it makes you burst out in laughter sometime, when you actually stop to take in what it's saying. What I'm saying is when Exhibit brings that car back, you gonna be bitches. What did you call me? No, no, I mean bitches. Like, like you gonna have so many bitches, that's what niggas is gonna call you. No disrespect. No disrespect? Yeah, but I don't mean bitches in a disrespectful way. I mean it as a general word for women. Without a shadow of a doubt, 
the Boondocks lost its way over the fourth season. But I do want to take this time before I break that down to praise what a masterpiece the first season was. In a nutshell, the satire used to put a mirror on one's own people has to be the most commendable thing to me. But I think for the Boondocks it just worked because, let's face it, black people have proven to be the most intriguing yet misunderstood people to the rest of the Earth's population, which is the reason why it works so much. Case in point, I'll be getting into the entire show in a little bit, but let's look at season 1 episode 2, the R. Kelly episode. You see, in 2022, with how many years we've had the internet, and so many scandals that have came and went with little to no repercussions for celebrities, in 2005, this episode was a huge deal. And it's only more evident now that it took an additional 15 years past that episode before they really held this guy accountable for his actions. The episode trial of R. Kelly was about Riley and Huey going to watch the R. Kelly trial. And it made the statement that no matter how much evidence was shown, matter of fact, he can even put his face in the damn camera, his celebrity status will always protect him and pretty much any other A-list celebrity from having to do any time behind something like statutory you-know-what. And pretty much every other episode in this season accomplishes a similar narrative. Season 2 still had great commentary, don't get me wrong. But this is where you started getting to the ending credits of certain episodes and asking yourself, what was the point of that? The Boondocks was never supposed to be a series that used arrogance and ignorance of urban people to make purposeless entertainment. It used the arrogance and ignorance of urban and non-urban people to make entertainment with the sole purpose of sending a message of consciousness and self-awareness through the glass bottle. It said a lot of things that were realistic to how both sides feel about each other. And in a somewhat tasteful manner. I mean, listen to this. Don't trust them new niggas with their spotty little nigga figures. Don't trust them new niggas over there. I think the N-word is okay as long as they say it. The previous statement I said was very evident for season one. Season 2, it had aspects of it, but it seemed as though the quality of the audio and visuals were the only thing that improved, and the quality of the message was going into the ground. Which, in Season 3, just became a bunch of memes, and let's not even acknowledge the fourth season. But for now, let's go over the episode list for each season and quickly address, what exactly was the point? <laughs> Season 1, Episode 1, The Garden Party. I never could narrow down this episode to a major theme. I guess it serves as an introduction to the show, its setting, characters, and dynamic between them. It also establishes what I mentioned earlier about a bunch of urban Negroes in a white neighborhood, and how blacks and whites at times don't understand each other. I know about white people too. Like when they talk, they say the whole word like this. I tried to see the deep underlying message, but I just ended up overthinking it. Seriously, I've seen it over 50 times and I still don't know how to exactly explain it. Also, I gotta say it's one of the most boring episodes in the series. Episode 2, The Trial of R. Kelly. Spoke on this one earlier. It just shows how stupid a lot of us are. Not just black people, just people, period. We'll disregard the evils that a person partakes in just because we idolize them. Now, some people see this so-called mountain of evidence, these videotapes, photographs, eyewitnesses, and DNA, and see a guilty man. But some of us can see that mountain of so-called evidence for what it really is, racism. Probably one of the most retarded scenes I've ever seen in my life, but displays the genius of Boondock's commentary. It also incorporates another angle people tend to argue from on these situations where some people feel like there's freedom of choice. Episode 3, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? Granddad, have you asked yourself why a 20-year-old girl would want to go out with a man your age? Because I laid my game down quite flat. Game? What you know about the game, Granddad? I know the game. Taking women out to eat, giving them free meals? What part of the game is that? Simply put, 
you can't turn up into a housewife. Beta male traits, they die hard. That's pretty much it. <laughs> run, bitch, run! Episode 4, Granddad's Fight. <laughs> the infamous stink meaner. The moral of this story. You know, we could all be reading a book right now. Your ego is not worth killing, dying, or going to jail over. Well, if you're black, I guess it does. Prick. Watch where you walking, bitch! What did you... Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm white! <laughs> where you going? Don't you ignore me! This is a perfectly good moment to throw your life away! Episode 5, The Xbox Killer. This is the episode about Tom being afraid of getting dealt with from the back in prison, his biggest fear. And then what ends up happening? He ends up arrested. It doesn't take a black man doing too much to end up in prison. Sometimes he didn't have to do anything at all. You in a court of law, you have the right to speak to an attorney. Man, fuck this shit. Who signed you on? Also, a dope shootout went down with some A-Rabs. What was the underlying message? You tell me. Episode 6, Psych. What, you thought I was going to sit up here for another half an hour, breaking down the rest of the 50 episodes? Get the fuck out of here. But I know all you nerds who like to overanalyze everything are probably sitting up there like, Man, this is some old bullshit. But it's cool. Let's see the response to this video, and maybe I'll end up doing a full analysis of the entire catalog. But yeah, that's pretty much the energy of the first season. And then season two came and doubled down on the element that made the Boondocks a household name. An element that really isn't much different than any other adult cartoon from that time, rather it be South Park, Family Guy, whatever. How stupid and edgy can it be, but the nigga version? It kinda ditched the laid back jazzy, classical, subliminal, political vibe from season one for a more up-tempo one, remixed with an energetic rendition of the opening theme. And I guess we could sidetrack and talk about the production changes now. Considering this is an animation channel, we can't let the video end until we discuss the Boondocks animation. What stands to show out from other series I named earlier that fit into the Adult Swim or Mature Cartoon category is that it actually wasn't an American animation. Do Wong Animation out in Korea handled it for the first season and Moi Animation for season 2 and forward. Which explains the massive upgrade in art style and overall graphics in a short two years. Apparently, the process of getting the show together was sort of tedious. The late John Witherspoon, who played Robert Freeman, said in an interview that they had to record their voices and then send the vocal chops over there to get the visuals adapted. By the way, with Duong Studio, it was kind of shocking just how many shows they actually done. A lot of them co-productions. Kid shows, mainly like Ben 10, Dragon Tales, I'll link the list in the description box, it's pretty interesting. Anyway, back to the boondocks. If you ask me, I say it was worth it going through the process of sending it abroad for visuals. I showed you what the pilot looked like a while ago, and without this direction, it might not have had that edge that it really needed to stand out and solidify itself. No other show at the time was doing this in this niche. For years during the web browser days of watching anime in the 2000s, I used to see the boondocks listed on plenty of anime sites along the likes of Naruto and Bleach. That's cause Korean anime is often categorized alongside Japanese anime for sharing the same principal style of delivery, especially when it comes to the choreography of action, fights and stuff like that. Though season 2 was cool, it definitely was the last time the show had any remnants of its true identity. And, like really think about it. Season 1 has episodes like Huey trying to explain the lie that is European Christianity, the dangers of soul food, the fake ass rapper images. What happened to I don't fear no man but God? Correction, God and the nigga that shot me. While season 2 performed an exorcism, has granddad dating a crazy kung fu bitch, and Riley fighting a bully, but doesn't necessarily win in the end. Like, what exactly was accomplished in any of these episodes? Well, it was entertaining. That was the saving grace. Regardless, it was a solid run and 
it's the season that gives Boondocks his reputation for predicting the future of the entertainment industry. From alphabet letter rappers to rappers snitching on themselves, catfishing, although I guess online dating was going on at that time, right? But well, sir, goodness. Robert! Oh my god, it's so good to finally meet you! Yeah, uh-huh. Just like the picture, right? Still. Season 1 was a season of self-awareness, while Season 2 is the season of foreshadowing. Yeah, as much as it strayed somewhat away from the essence of Aaron's initial vision, there's still something to be said about the second season. Now, I'll be honest with you, there were attempts to be conscious in Season 3, but it's really irrelevant because it was kind of just boring. Not kind of, it was hella boring. The writing was off. Think a lot of times where TV shows and movies fall short, 11 out of 10 times it traces back to poor writing. The first episode about Obama's campaign had to be the biggest waste of 20 minutes I ever watched in my life. Like, nothing about it was enlightening, intriguing, or funny. Basically, season 3 just picked the scab of the scrape which season 2 had created, only leaving a very bad bruise which led to an infection, otherwise known as season 4 which caused the series to ultimately get amputated off the network. Aside from reaching peak production, particularly in its graphics, the show low-key could have been better off without the third installment. Still, best believe this run did produce some classics. The Red Ball was dope, possibly top 10 in the entire series. Lastly, it is most definitely the season of parodies like Soulja Boy, The Booty Warrior, and La Milton. On the note of season 4, all I gotta say is, why? So I actually only watched it for the first time a week before this recording, just for the purpose of doing the video, not cause I thought it was as bad as people said it was. It was just a lack of interest, but after watching it, I wish I didn't. It was a huge waste of time, the soul is gone, and yeah, that's all I wanted to say about it. Now back in 2014, the season ended prematurely from what was identified as cultural insensitivities. Personally, I call bullshit on that because the show has been culturally insensitive from the beginning, 10 years prior to that season's airing. Matter of fact, I don't even really want to talk about this anymore because Aaron Magruder was barely even involved in this, if at all. But if you're a true Boondocks fan like me, you probably want to watch it just for completion purposes. In September 2019, fans were excited to hear that two seasons of a reboot was in production to be dropped on HBO Max. Unfortunately, February of 2022, it was announced the reboot was cancelled. Sony pulled out. And that's where the franchise stands as of today. Man, I know most of you watching this probably got so much history with the boondocks and the amazing moments throughout the years. I mean, some of the most legendary entertainers have had cameos in there. People like Snoop Dogg, Busta Rhymes, people like Charlie Murphy. And then, of course, there's songs from legends like the late, you know, rest in peace, MF Doom. Now, it certainly wasn't the inventor of social satire, but it most definitely brought its own flavor and charisma to the game. Maybe one day we'll get at least one more classic season with the creator's hands deep in it. But for now, this is what we got. So on behalf of the Freeman family, I'm out. Thanks for watching. Peace. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>